What's up and welcome back to Rumor Has It Official. Let's get straight into talking about 90 Day Fiance. This is season eight, episode 14. And the title of this episode is Into Your Arms. Before we get this video started, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up for me. I'm trying something different here. So you're gonna see a series of different videos from me and they're all gonna be under the individual couples. So um, this video here is gonna be only about Mike and Natalie. And then I will have more videos come out that will be just about Jovi and Yara, just all the different couples that are on the show. I wanted to do something different. Also be able to push more content out for you guys by breaking the couples up instead of just grouping it into one recap. So let me know your thoughts by the end of all of this. If you like this type of series of me doing it this way, if not, like I said, this just gives me the opportunity to push more content out for you all. So yeah, without rambling too much, let's go ahead and get straight into this couple here, Mike and Natalie. Now, Mike and Natalie have finally decided on a wedding day, okay? And the wedding is approaching very fast, okay? He says that he is now looking forward to the wedding day. Due to the pandemic, things are shutting down and they will be forced to marry at Mike's house by the pond. With just six days till their wedding, she has to call her mom and tell her mom that she, her mom won't be able to make it. She won't be able to get her mom to America to witness their wedding. When she calls her mom, she's hysterically crying. And her, Natalie's mother tells her, don't cry, it's okay. You know, she reassures her that everything is okay. And Natalie carries on crying, saying that it's so hard for her being out here in the woods and that she feels bad there. Now, I believe these are Natalie's true feelings. While she tries to stick it out and work it out with Mike and, you know, wants this marriage so bad or fights for this marriage, I feel like her true thoughts are she's not happy there. Mike doesn't make her happy. So it's like, what are her true intentions of really staying in something that has been so rough? Like they barely just started getting along and she's already been there for what, three months? two months, three months, and they're just barely getting, starting to get along. So I'm not quite sure why Natalie wanted to move forward with Mary Mike, because I don't feel as though she is truly happy with him. And I'm very curious to know all of your thoughts on that. Washington State ended up setting a stay at home order, but tomorrow is their wedding day. Mike seems in better spirits, but I couldn't help but think maybe it has nothing to do with Natalie. And just maybe he's talking to someone else. Maybe his hairstylist? I don't know because the hairstylist sure did uh, make it a point to know all of his business. And she did somewhat in their last, when he got his last haircut, she was shooting her shot. So I don't know, maybe he could possibly be talking to somebody else and squim, y'all. We don't know. Now in this scene, Natalie tells her friend on a video call that she feels good about the wedding, but wishes that she could have had her family and friends by her side. She compares her first wedding to the wedding that she will have with Mike. The first wedding, she says they spent cr a crazy amount of money. And when the producer poses the question, do you want your wedding with Mike to be like your first? Natalie says no, because Mike can't afford it. And she has already had that before, so she doesn't need it. Adding, she wanted her wedding with Mike to be next to the ocean, her in a beautiful gown with flowers, music, and guests. And she just wanted to have a nice party. But the wedding with Mike is going to be by the pond. So for you to say that you don't need this extravagant wedding, because you've already had that experience with your first wedding, I just thought it was like, basically you do want that because you go in to describe, you want a beautiful ground, you want guests, you want music, you want flowers. So you want a nice wedding and you're settling having a wedding by the pond because that's all you can, because that's basically all that you all can do, especially during the pandemic. But I have a feeling that it wouldn't have been very extravagant, even if there was no pandemic. I think all of this stuff worked in Mike's favor, the pandemic happening, because I feel like he was waiting for the right opportunity to send her home. Now, to summarize it all, I feel like it's not the wedding that she wanted, but she's settling for what Mike can offer. So Mike and Natalie sit down and eat whatever that junk was on a plate. 
it was something that he grilled outside and it just looked nasty. I'm just, I'm just saying it looked real nasty, real suspect. <laughs> Now, in my head, I'm thinking like, where's all the size? Like, where's your rice, your veggies? You know, like it wasn't no size, no rice, no vegetables, nothing, just straight up meat. They was just eating meat. And Natalie basically picked all over her food because she still had like pieces of it. I was like, what the crap is it? First of all, like it didn't look like beef. I, I don't know what it was. I, I really don't. But just looking at it and thinking about it is making me sick. So we're going to move on. <laughs> but like I said, in this scene, they seem to be in a better place. Laughing, joking, Mike giving her a lap dance. But the whole time I'm thinking, how long is this going to last? A bomb. We about to get dropped with a bomb because it's just a matter of time. Because my thing is, they were going through hell. I mean, from the time she landed, okay, and then all of a sudden with the like a flip of the switch, now y'all just getting along and you just in such a great place. I knew that wasn't real. I wasn't buying that one bit. Comment down below your thoughts. So in the next scene, we have the wedding day. It is the wedding day. And instead of smiles, we hear sniffles. And then eventually we see Natalie in tears. Now, Natalie has three days until her visa expires and it doesn't look good, okay? Natalie in this scene calls her officiant, their officiant, and tells her that Mike called off the wedding the same day they were supposed to be getting married, okay? Now, Mike is low down, okay? He's low down. He is so low down. Since he didn't want to marry Natalie, I feel like first off, he should have been the one to call the officiant to cancel things since he didn't, he, he's the one that called off the wedding that day. So he should have handled that. And also, I truly believe that Mike never checked back in since the time he left Ukraine and she threw that ring in his back. He never checked back into this relationship. I feel like he used her for free booty. Yeah, I'm going to say it. He used her for free booty and to renew another, get on another season so that he could pay off that debt. Because like I said, we don't see him talking nothing about the, all this debt he was in, financial debt. We don't hear nothing else about it. So whatever they paid him to do another season with Natalie, he took that money and paid off that debt. Now, in this scene, the officiant is trying to calm Natalie down so that she can understand her clearly and what she's saying, what's even happening, what's going on. The officiant is like, well... If you have to go back home, it doesn't mean that the relationship is over. She didn't even need to say all of this, in my opinion, because it's like, what exactly does that mean? If someone is telling you that a person, the man, he called off the wedding the day of the wedding, then that means it's over. Because it's very rare that you hear a situation where like, well, we he called off the wedding, but we still together. I think when you call off a wedding, people done done. Like they decided that, it's no more. So Natalie tells her that it's over, that, you know, she's not discussing it with her and can't forgive Mike for this. Natalie isn't perfect. And she is a little bit kooky, a lot of bit kooky. Okay. But no woman deserves that. Like I said, I already knew Mike from the beginning when he even put the, the ringer back on ring back on her finger to appease her that he really did not want to do that because when she wanted to know, did he forgive her for what went down in Keith? He said no. So that was a, a strong indicator there for her to say, okay, well, if you don't forgive me and we can't move forward all the way, then you shouldn't put the ring back on my finger. And then they could have made that choice together and go their separate ways. But she still took that ring. I feel like never put a ring on a woman's finger unless you're absolutely sure that you want to take the next step in life. Okay. Two hours later, Natalie is packing up and the neighbor Tammy comes by to let her know that Mike will be sending her a plane ticket to her phone. Now, I'm assuming Tammy will be taking her to the airport because she's telling her, I got a couple things to do. I'm going to move some stuff out the way so your luggage can fit in my car. And now the crazy thing is the Ukrainian borders are closed. So she will have to fly to Europe. Then she doesn't have a plan after that, but will be forced to try to figure it out. When Natalie threw Mike's shoes from the bedroom to the kitchen and it landed perfectly on that countertop, y'all, I was rolling. I was no more good. <laughs> she's sobbing and crying and then she throws the shoe and then she's like, <laughs> she started laughing. She's like, <laughs> it was his clothes. 
<laughs> it was his clothes. <laughs> Natalie hasn't informed her mom now on what in the world is going on about what has taken place because she has no plan and doesn't want her mom to worry. So I really thought that this was something, like I said, it was bound to happen, okay? It was bound to happen for these couples, for this couple not to make it all the way through. And I feel like he was just trying to find the right time. He knew, he knew doggone well he didn't want to be with Natalie no more. When she got to America, he knew then he didn't want to be with her. Like I said, I truly feel that he checked out long before and he did this to get some free booty and why he was getting free booty paid off his debt that they pay whatever TLC paid him to do another season. So that was what he did. Okay. He took advantage of this situation. So I'm really curious to know your thoughts on what you thought about 90 day fiance. This is season eight, episode 14. And the title of this episode is into your arms. Comment down below your thoughts on Mike and Natalie. Give this video a big thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribe and hit that bell. So you'll be notified on the next time I make an upload. And if you're not receiving your post notifications on any of my uploads, go ahead and reset your notification settings and see if that helps. And yeah, I truly appreciate your support for those who constantly check in. Even if you're not receiving those post notifications, you just check back in weekly with me to see if I have anything new up. I appreciate all of your love, your support, your positive feedback. And I hope that you all enjoyed this video and you will enjoy this series because I got a couple of them coming with the different couples. It's going to be only about one couple on this episode, if that makes sense. <laughs> if I said that right and that makes sense, but yeah. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video again, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Peace.